Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome inside TD Garden for a garden report on Celtics All Access, CLNS Media. Another baffling one from the Celtics tonight. They win 116-111 in overtime, but trailed by 14 with 420 to go against a team that had won seven games out of their 36 so far. Almost lost. Late assist from Jalen to Josh Richardson. Ends up tying this one, and then Jalen to Al Horford ends up winning it in overtime after a five-point outburst from Dennis Schroeder, who played 40 minutes in his return. Hit a three, a spot-up three that gave the Celtics the lead, and they never looked back. Magic drew close one more time before the end of overtime, but end up losing this one, and the Celtics escape with their scariest win of the year, I guess is the right way to put this one. Celtics after this game sounding more like a sigh of relief than an endearing or captivating victory that you would normally expect without the context of this one, without the recent weeks that they've played so inconsistently through. Ime Udoka, that was pretty much the theme of his postgame presser after this one. Sometimes we look like the team that can stick with anybody. Milwaukee, Phoenix, drubbing Phoenix on Friday, uh, basically scoring at will against the Magic early and late in this game. But he described the middle periods where the Celtics turned it over nine times, I believe, in the second quarter. Uh, as part of a 21 turnover effort led by Jalen Brown, who had seven. What we preach is, you know, the standard that you want to play at regardless of who's available. And so we've shown that we can compete with whoever, with tons of guys missing, uh, as we have done, and, and beat some really good teams. And then, you know, we have, have quarters like tonight where we look like we've never played together. And maybe it's because we haven't at times with some of the lineups and some of the people missing. 50 points for Jalen Brown saved the Celtics in this one. 29 shots, 5 of 10 from 3. Astounding efficiency from him. His best scoring game ever. He had 47 in regulation. Caps it with a big 3 late in overtime. And makes a few key passes down the stretch as well that got the Celtics out of this one with a win. It was important with how tight the standings are and how easy of an opponent the Magic are, especially down Okiki and Cole Anthony and Jalen Suggs and all these other guys. You need to win this one. So it is an achievement in that sense, escaping. But in terms of feeling good about the team, Brown, we've seen him capable of these outbursts. Dennis Schroeder saying, I've seen him, even through my quarantine, score 20, 25 points in first halves. And what he said exactly was, it's about time he scored 50. Had the closing side of that full game effort from Jalen this time. He's, he goes 47 minutes in this one, I believe, to get the win. Um, just watching, watching film. Uh, I had a really good film session over the last couple of days with, with Joe, Joe Mazzula, our assistant coach, and just watching how teams are guarding, you know, you know, watching where, you know, um, the help is coming from and, and what I need to be looking at. And as I continue to move forward, I got a lot more to learn, but um, I definitely felt better going into this game and, you know, just kind of continue to build off of that, making the right plays, making it, keeping it simple, like you said. When you're doing one of those film sessions, are you just looking at like the things that didn't work out and trying to figure out how to do those better? Or are you also looking at what did work and trying to balance it out? Uh, everything. Watch the, uh, like yesterday, we watched the whole game. Watched all my minutes, watched the whole game, watched where, you know, I made some good plays, where I made some bad ones, um, and how we can be better. Also watched other guys, other clips of guys around the league, and um, just, you know, talk things out. and. You know, try to emphasize what to really look for when teams are, you know, guarding you. Jalen was astounding. Most of his work at the basket, three and ones in that fourth quarter, but the passing is still what I'm focused on. And unforced errors, turnovers, dribbling issues, a double dribble at one point in this one, him being unable to connect with teammates consistently, not even looking at times through the three and a half quarters to start this one, like you want to bring the ball up. Now Celtics are splitting those responsibilities. Schroeder, smart in the backcourt today, did a bunch of work in that regard. Brown found what he could later in the game. And that 12-ish minute stretch after the first portion of the fourth quarter where he missed a three, committed his seventh turnover, he was nearly perfect. Nine of 12 shooting to close this one. 26 points in about 12-ish minutes, like I said there. The efficiency of Jalen at his best is the reason that I look at him and say, never trade him. He's too good. The talent there is unbelievable. But in terms of the goal, 
that Ime has for him in terms of becoming a playmaker for this squad. He wants the best players on this team to be able to make plays too. It's still a huge work in progress. I asked Ime about that after the game. Yeah, on Jalen as well, your, your big aspiration this year was to see him become a playmaker. For all security, a big part of that. Um, these last two weeks, he's had to step up in that role. What's sort of your reaction to how he stepped into that role overall this year so far? It's been up and down. I mean, to be honest, and he knows that. We've watched quite a bit of film um, lately, you know, of these past few games when Dennis and Jason were out and he has the ball a lot more. And so at times he looks really good. At times he's, you know, natural score mode and, and he's, you know, kind of gets tunnel vision there. So it's a work in progress. Um, you know, something that you are who you are throughout your life is not going to change overnight, but we want him to grow in that area. And so um, he's receptive to it, to the coaching. Um, we watch the film, like I said, quite a bit lately. And you see it translate in certain games, like, uh, you know, even the Clipper game when he passed the ball, he didn't get any assists that game because he missed shots, but it was a very um, conscious decision to not play in the crowd and get off the ball. So you see growth and carry over from the film sessions. And I think he's getting more comfortable with guys being out now. It'll be have to carry over when we got guys back and still playing in that same role, not just scoring mode, but uh, playing the right way in general. Now you see it throughout this one. Up and down, but mostly down. Jalen has more turnovers than assists this year, which is a pretty unbelievable stat. Uh, now, I asked Dennis Schroeder after the game as well about sharing those responsibilities. It's pretty unique, he said, for a team to have an array of ball handlers. Sharing it to the degree that they are. They have a ton of playmakers here, and he's talked about that all year in joining the Celtics. Uh, pretty unique from what I've seen, too, to have bigs doing it like Rob and Horford were and guards doing it like Schroeder and Smart and at the core of it Jalen and Jason's playmaking being emphasized there. A lot of talk post game about them playing free and having the ability to make mistakes. I think there's some truth to that but at the same time you do want your ball handlers to be your best ball protectors. Ball security job security as they say and the Celtics haven't done that well over the last week or two here 17 turnovers against the Suns double digits against the Bucks and the Timberwolves I believe so they are giving the ball away at a pretty high rate here and in fact that's six turnover burst in the halftime the Magic didn't really score off any of those Celtics got a take foul off one of them uh, I think the Magic shot one of five off the other five there. So transition was a mess for the Magic. They missed a ton of shots inside. Celtics protected the rim well at times, but Orlando being one of the worst teams in the league was a bigger reason that the Celtics escaped with this one than any of the heroic things they did down the stretch there. Although Brown does deserve a hat tip for the best scoring performance of his career, it's still a... Uh, unbalanced feeling coming out of this one even with the Spurs and two Knicks games ahead this week even if they make it through this week and sweep it is that step back around the corner for them he may basically said it this is a team that is up sometimes and down other times even within the flow of quarter to quarter and until they can put a complete game out there it's hard to feel good about this team the way they're connecting together you still hear them talking positive reinforcement is mostly what you hear from the Celtics after these games. I think each of the individuals, Brown especially, feels like they can turn this around and fix this for this team. But it's connecting, it's playmaking, it's facilitating, it's still are the questions that make you wonder if this offense and this team are ever going to figure it out. And they didn't do anything to make you feel better about that in that regard through a win here. Although a win is a win, they'll take them where they can get them shorthanded with Jason Tatum out. He did shoot pregame before this game, held out due to conditioning. Hopefully we'll hear more about that in the coming days. Not a ton about where he's at from a conditioning standpoint entering this one, although he was a game time decision. Robert Williams with the toe missed this game as well after his big triple double on Friday. So the losses keep mounting. Romeo Langford sick, Roger Thomas, Hurt back, one guy goes in, one guy comes out essentially, and this time it was one and four for the Celtics here. I guess Tatum's been out, so one and three is the trade off in terms of players coming in and out. But for the Celtics, every single night they're playing a shorthanded team. So everybody's going through it. That's been the slogan around the NBA the last couple weeks here. Celtics play the Spurs on Wednesday before a quick hop down to New York. I will be there. I'm traveling to New York City later in the week for CLNS Media, Celtics All Access. I'm Bobby Manning. Uh, we'll see you on Wednesday as well as Thursday from the Big Apple again. And make sure you follow CLNS Media, Celtics CLNS on Twitter is the at. Uh, follow Celtics All Access on YouTube. Huge support there. And 
Of course, stick with us every night after the game for Celtics post-game live. I'll see you on Wednesday.